Call this meeting to order. Um, everyone's here but Sherry, and I will take a motion for the minutes. Second. Moved, seconded. Got that, Heather? Uh, any discussion of the minutes? All those in favor of approval? Aye. Aye. And none opposed. All right, public comment. There's no member of the public here. Any disclosures or recusals? No. Um, so we are moving on to item number five, update on the city agency survey that Heather and Enos, I believe, has been doing a little prodding on. So. Yeah, let me turn off the lights a little bit so you okay. can see the PowerPoint. Okay, yes, thanks, thanks to Enos for sending out the survey um, and sending a reminder out. We have pretty good response rate. Uh, about 19 agencies responded to part one of the survey, which does leave at least seven agencies that have not yet responded, but many of the ones we've been most interested in have responded. So I broke this um, PowerPoint into two sections, um, but uh, I want to sort of frame it for you for a second. The second part of the survey is largely 25 open-ended questions. Tell us about your technology. Where do you deploy it? How is it utilized? Those kinds of questions are not easily translated into a PowerPoint presentation or graphs or charts. Um, so the full data sets have been made available to everyone in my office and the chair. Um, I'm assuming that after this meeting and this presentation, um, next steps will include reaching out to those agencies that have not yet replied or have um, filled this out incompletely, and, um, and then cleaning the data and really determining what this data tells us and how you want to use it to develop an approval process going forward. Um, so the first part of the survey was really for every agency to tell us, um, do they have surveillance technology and um, just a little bit about it. And then the second part goes into much more detail. So we had, uh, as I mentioned, we had 19 agencies responding, assessor, attorney, building inspection. I won't read this list out to you, but um, um, I will point out that water utility streets, traffic engineering, and police all filled this out, which is very important to us. I'm not sure if you can read these, but I just wanted to tell you the questions that were in part one include, does your agency have surveillance technology? Does it have plans to purchase surveillance technology? Does it have access to surveillance technology from outside city government? Do they approve sharing the location of the surveillance equipment? Um, Sarah, I don't know if this has been translated to you yet, but uh, many months ago, when talking about locating where the cameras in the city are, we thought what might be easiest is to have city IT put together a map of the enterprise system, and then we would ask agencies, can we look at your items on the map? Um, almost every agency said yes. So we're going to, you know, I assume this committee is going to come back to IT and ask you to develop that map. Um, and then finally, the last question was, were you unable to disclose the surveillance technology or unable to answer any of these questions? So I'll just run through the, the way folks answered these questions. Um, our first question, about 63% of the agencies do have surveillance technology. The exceptions were assessor, attorney, building inspection, clerk, civil rights, HR, and planning. And... Um, and uh, a, a, a smaller portion said yes to the question, does your agency have plans to purchase? And this did not correlate exactly with the agencies that have, um, that have uh, existing surveillance technology. The ones that do plan to purchase include library, metro, Monona Terrace, parking utility, parks, police, streets, and traffic engineering. So the difference is water utility and treasurer and finance, they all have technology, but don't plan to purchase any more in the near future. Um, the agencies were asked, do you have access to non-city Madison surveillance 
non-city of Madison surveillance technology. Three, it, three entities said yes uh, to that question, Metro, police, and streets. Uh, Metro said they monitored DOT cameras um, and transit news articles, <laughs> which I thought was maybe not, maybe even more granular than we were looking for. Um, <clears throat> MPD said they routinely obtained surveillance footage from private entities and other law enforcement agencies um, and has access to some privately owned camera systems. And streets referred to um, MPD and traffic engineering cameras. I'm kind of run through, running through quick. If there are any questions, just jump in. Sure. So this was a question. Access to non-City of Madison surveillance technology? And or, and or other agencies. Oh, I've shortened okay. the title of the question. OK, thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> as I mentioned in the beginning, most agencies would be comfortable sharing the location of their surveillance cameras using having IT develop a map. Um, it was just Monona Terrace and police that did not want their cameras on that map. Parks didn't answer the question. Um, and finally, were you unable to disclose a surveillance technology or ans unans unable to answer any questions? Hey, can you move up to the, to this sure. Um, on the The next question was the final question in part one. Were you unable to disclose a surveillance technology or unable to answer any of the questions? Um, once again, Monona Terrace and Police Department were unable to answer all of the questions, so I would encourage the work group to follow up with those two agencies and, and see if they can learn more. Can I just, you? just to clarify on, on that last question about the, the enterprise cameras, yeah. the, our full response was, the public cameras that we have that are considered MPD owned, we don't have any problem disclosing. Okay. It's just MPD facility cameras right. that secure our facilities and that are okay. at our buildings. Right. We, we, those we want to keep confidential. Right. So there was a. Sorry. Thank you. No, thank you for that. Um, a few, a few agencies did not answer this question, and may need. We may need to follow up. They may have just accidentally skipped the question. So that's part one. Um, we had more agencies responding to part one, which was as intended. Um, part two, a smaller group of agencies replied to. So as I mentioned, part two is very elaborate, very extensive, and almost all of the questions are open-ended. So where there were themes, I tried to draw those out. But in many cases, um, I think the work group's going to really need to dig into the details at a later date and determine how the answers uh, influence your, your development of a policy. Um, the intent was that each agency would fill out part two for each type of equipment. I believe the only department that did that was MPD. Um, and I'm really grateful for um, Assistant Chief Wall's thorough responses. Um, MPD filled out six different types of technology um, through this survey, which is represented here. So the participating agencies were water utility, treasurer, traffic engineering, streets, police, parking utility, Monona Terrace, Monona M Metro Transit, Mayor's Office, Library, and Finance. Um, I should say, if anyone is actually working with the data in SurveyMonkey, you'll see that a few other agencies started to fill out this survey, but then realized that they didn't have surveillance technology and did not need to do this part. So I left those off for clarity. So you have to say uh, police answered nine clicks on and the rest of the other people only answered one click? Well, no. They, they filled out, you're supposed to fill out the survey for each technology that you have. So they filled it out nine times for each technology. All the other agencies only filled it out once. But some, te some agencies, for example, traffic, I believe, referred to two different technologies in their, in yeah. their, um, in their answers. 
Did you? That, that, yeah, that was my question. Is it because the other ones just had one technology, or in they most, combined, or they didn't do them all? Or I what? saw one entity combine. Um, I'm, I'm referring to um, actually, I think it was parking utility. Um, almost everyone else talked only about their cameras and described their cameras, um, and no other technologies in their um, answers, and so. That may be an area that we need to follow up on is it's because I think we've already heard from other agencies that they have more technologies than cameras and that they may not have included that for whatever reason or not understood. It was a complicated survey, so we might need to follow up. So question for Heather and or Enos. Um, I recall that there were 12 agencies that had filed <coughs> policies with the clerk's office, and there's 11 here. Is one of the outstanding agencies one that has um, has previously filed a policy with the clerk's see. office on surveillance equipment? Sure. Do you know, could you say what are the, uh, or they would be seven outstanding, right? Um, IT. Oh, oh, it would be <laughs> IT. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, that's probably the one. IT is one, um, but uh, you know, it's interesting. I think the, the folks filling out this survey, some of them may not even be familiar with all the things that we know about their agency surveillance technology because um, several agencies that filled out part two said that they don't have a surveillance use policy, and I would, I would beg to differ, that they actually do have yeah. one on file. So it, there's some data cleaning, ground truthing that needs to be done. So I, I just wanted to highlight um, a few of the questions in surveillance in the surveillance survey in part two. We're asking about what is the purpose of the technology? Does your agency have a policy governing the use of the technology? Uh, how is the technology deployed or where? And how does your agency control access to the surveillance equipment? Um, and how is data stored, managed, and destroyed? Those are highlights, but there were 25 questions in the survey. So we can dig into a few answers here. Um, one thing that SurveyMonkey allows you to do to communicate um, the responses for open-ended questions is to create sort of a word cloud. Um, so when asked to describe the surveillance technology, if we take all the answers from all the agencies that replied and put them all together and look at the words that are most frequently used, security camera, locations, tracking, and recording devices are the reasons that or or how agencies would describe their surveillance technology. Now, this this is obviously not granular data. We have the granular data, but it's uh, it would be very difficult to communicate to you, which a, in the time allowed today, which agency is doing is describing their technology in what way. So I would recommend doing that at a later date. Um, for a similar strategy to look at question number four, which is what is the purpose of surveillance technology. Um, agencies highlighted um, parking, cameras, criminal, video, security, tactical operations. And how is the technology utilized? Similar responses, um, incident, cameras, vehicles, security video footage. So we asked, does your agency have a policy governing the use of surveillance technology? As I'd mentioned, um, we've got seven here saying yes, and four saying no. I think of these four, I think all of them actually have policies on file. I have to double check. So I think the people filling this out did not know that they had a policy on file, which is actually valuable to know. Yes. <laughs> That's right. Um, can folks, yeah, this is big enough. Okay. Um, does The question was, does another city agency or other external organization share access to the technology? Um, most folks answered this. Um, and in many cases, yes. The answer is yes. So traffic engineering provides access to city engineering and Madison police. Finance says that IT has access. Metro says the police and the school district can access. Um, Treasurer says city IT can access. Um, 
water utility says that um, it's interesting uh, police especially forensics have access to cameras and shared footage um, and then um, I shortened your answer a little bit here Vic but um, police say that other agencies can request access but no one has immediate automatic access to the data if you if you want to comment on that you're welcome to just with the exception of the city attorney's office can get at some of our squad video for prosecution purposes. Mm -hmm. So on that question, so there's no um, technology we use that there's like a, a third party vendor for software, for example, that runs it, that has access? None that were reported in the survey. To the data? Yeah. Um, yeah. No, you're off now. You're off now. There. Um, I also think that, and Heather touched on this, is that I think for some agencies they may not know what the, the definition is, yeah. and so when you go back and you talk to them, you need to. And I think traffic engineering's example that Dave Dreyer had done where he talked about the consultant that they had who was coming in and was using the, the um, software, it's Wi-Fi software, it's not Bluetooth, I double checked. That would be considered, I think, in, under your definition, mm -hmm. surveillance. So looking at that as something else that we're gonna have to bring in is who um, is considered the owner, who has access. Yeah. yeah. Um, and. Oftentimes in contracts, the contracts say that the city owns all data. So that is something that is, as we're going through and we're doing that purchasing, when we go in and we do the contract negotiations, data is always belong, belongs to the city. If we stop the contract, we get all of our data back as well. So that's something we'll have to look at in terms of how does that fall into this whole surveillance piece. So we own it, but do they have use rights? Do they have? some it, it depends on how that contract is written okay yeah so and the specific thing you were just talking about was the things on at intersections that he said they were Bluetooth Bluetooth yeah sort of tracking device but it's actually a Wi-Fi that according I talked to Yang town he said it was Wi-Fi okay yeah I mean we should probably get clarification yeah. on that yeah, yeah. okay thanks yeah. Okay, uh, one question I wanted to highlight was, <clears throat> for what reason do the authorized positions have access to the data? And um, the common response words included investigations, in-car video, incidents, report writing, and traffic. So <clears throat> there's a lot of analysis to do here still. I think that um, First and foremost, certain, some, some agencies have not yet completed the survey. Another agency that's going to be important is housing um, because they have um, facilities with surveillance and they have not completed the survey. Um, most agencies only reported data on cameras with the exception of MPD's very thorough responses. Um, and we do have verbal confirmation that there are other surveillance technologies that these agencies do have. So. Um, the question I would raise uh, for the work group is who will be tasked with direct follow-up to those agencies and how do you want to um, institutionalize that, that process or formalize that process? And, oh, sorry. I'll just say I can follow up with the agencies that have not completed the survey okay. as of the deadline and make sure that they get those in even after the reminder. So, to that. Thanks, Ina. Thank did you reach out to see why they didn't complete their? No. They, they actually had till the 30th. Yeah, which was Saturday. Re, which yeah. was Saturday. Yeah. So they may be in your mailboxes right now, right? Well, no, because that it's a live survey, so I downloaded the data today. So we know everything that's in so far. Um, I think the last step was determining who, who well, who's going to take this on. The how do we want to do the clarification of, uh, you know, and, and perhaps coaching of departments that 
didn't seem to have understood some questions. I mean, I think as chair of the committee, I will go through this with a, a fine tooth comb and sit down with probably Quasi if he's going to be your replacement on this committee. Um, but I mean, I, I will commit myself to do that. If there is another committee member who would like to also do that, have a look at all of the the answers. It's a thick, Heather printed it out, it's a thick document and this doesn't include IT yet. So, um, so is this on register or no? No, in part because I wanted to confirm that there's nothing confidential in that survey. Is that fair to say? Yeah, that yeah. is fair. So we, we, I can put that on register. Okay. You're going to, and will you put the PowerPoint? Yeah, the right PowerPoint right? definitely. Um, okay. I, I will look at it, but yeah. maybe not with quite as fine a tooth comb. That's what you do, but yeah. I'll look at it. Okay. I'll also look at it once it is online and let you know. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so within the <coughs> next week or two. Mm -hmm. um, yep, so send an email that it's there, and then I'll start yep. looking at it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, it'll be there by tomorrow at 4.30. Right, tomorrow, okay. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. <laughs> or it won't. <laughs> 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 there, be square. Yeah. Yeah. Venus? Yeah. <coughs> Which agencies haven't responded again? It's the 30th you now. Get on them tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. You can get on me. 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 How, uh, I mean, we have kind of a preliminary clarifying phase to go yet with the uh, survey, <coughs> with the survey. Um, and I think we have discussed using this as a way to inform our policy in a couple of ways. Number one, in terms of looking at best practices that are already there, that some agencies may already have written in their policies, um, and to see if we can extract principles that could uh, cover you know everyone um, and secondly then just looking for gaps um, where no agency has you know written something in policy that we have we've discussed or we feel is important um, any other ideas or discussion about how we use this information does that seem does that seem right yeah so are we also thinking of inviting these agency heads to speak to us, or we'll just go by this survey? Heather had a, had a schedule, so the water utility um, couldn't make it until later this summer, right? Yep, They're, they can make it though. They I think in August or September if you're if you schedule a meeting then. Okay, and then did you have anyone else in the queue? I don't have anyone else in the queue yet. I feel like I would like Minona Terrace yeah, um, to yeah, come so we can yeah. and uh, we can follow up with um, Quasi on that and what other agencies who we haven't heard from would you like to hear from? Um, I think it was a key, Metro. CDA. Well, we've heard from Metro. I think CDA. Yeah, yeah I agree CDA. Yeah. So Minona Terrace, CDA and Water Utility. And we'll see if we can get those other two in, um, you know, this month or next month. <coughs> Actually, it might be worth it for me to reach out directly to CDA since they have they haven't responded to the survey, and we want them to present. Okay. What well, out? Monona Terrace also, they said no to access, so maybe you should reach out to them also. Yeah, I think, yeah. well, Heather, could you, I mean, <coughs> see, I'm saying me, CDA, just because they haven't, we haven't heard anything, but okay. Heather has been in, they have, Monona Terrace has responded to our process and has, I mean, I think there are some lines of communication already there okay. through our staff, so I think All right. that should be okay. There's Sherry. Mm -hmm. Anything else on the survey? No, I think it was good to respond to it. I mean, uh, hopefully Ennis can say something soon 
on his follow-up to the seven uh, agencies. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so the other item on our agenda is uh, at our last meeting, or two meetings ago maybe, um, staff agreed, we agreed to, for this committee to step back on like actually creating um, something around the technology approval process and ask staff to develop a recommendation for us. So I believe the city attorney and Sarah and others have um, worked on a draft which they don't have um, completely fleshed out, but Sarah's um, willing to talk it through. She and uh, the city attorney have have a concept that they want to share with us. Um, question? Mm -hmm. So uh, will we be talking about the surveillance definition also? Is that part of what you all yeah, worked on? We, we yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so do we want to talk about that first, or do we want to talk about the, the approval process, process? The approval process. And Let's talk are. about the process first, because that's okay. actually what's actually on our agenda. That's and what I was can, thinking. Um, talk about the definition. Okay. So, um, Vic and um, Marcy, were you at that one? We've had several meetings. We've had probably four meetings now to oh, talk about this. Thank you. Um, and the, the biggest concern about the approval process is not making it so that the process becomes a bottleneck as we're trying to move through and that it's a process that's going to work for the council and work for agencies as they're trying to purchase software and get through contracts. Um, the first idea that we had was to try to, to connect it somehow with the finance committee and have the finance committee um, looking at these and approving them. And I went and talked to Dave Schmidicki and he said, yeah, that would probably cause more work for the finance department and it, it wouldn't serve what you were looking for. So he and I brainstormed and he came up with the idea of a passive memo. They use these at the state where um, it's a memo that comes from a director. So in this term, this one it would be the IT director, so it would come from me, where we would have two processes that we would go through. The first process would be anything that we don't think needs to be confidential, and then those things that we feel need to be confidential. Um, with the first one, it would go to the mayor and the council president and the vice president, and it would be a memo saying this is what the surveillance is, this is what they want to do with it. What we would do um, is create a template that we would have all agencies fill out exactly the same so that we have a consistent way that they're looking at it. So when you look at a resolution, you know how it's very consistent, same idea. So they would go through, they would, um, the memo would explain what the uh, objective of the surveillance was. All of those questions that mm -hmm. Heather is capturing would be the same thing. Um, how long they were gonna use it for, et cetera, cost, all of those good things. The mayor and the council president and vice president would look at it. They would have a discussion. Does it need to be a resolution or not a resolution? If they decide that this one does need to be a resolution and it needs to go along that path, then we would create that path. Otherwise, it would just go into, and this is where I don't know what would happen to it, and this is where Mike May is coming in to help us with it. Um, it would go into some kind of legislative movement that way and it would just kind of sit there as this is this has been um, sent to the council it's now on record that this is a new you know piece of security um, surveillance that we're doing so if it was a new camera etc that's where those would sit for those that are confidential they would go on record with the mayor and the president and vice president of the council and we would have to have that in some kind of confidential so Mike May has been looking at and he says that he thinks that maybe the public nuisance, the way that plant path works might be the way we would want to try to do this one. So he was going to write a memo explaining how he was going to have this work. So that's where we are today with the approval process. Can you explain how the public nuisance works, Marcy? Um, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> like Guess there what? are public There's nuisances <laughs> that are on record somehow, but not in a legislative. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> under. <laughs> 
<laughs> under Are the they people <laughs> under the public <laughs> nuisance ordinance, it states that the city attorney will provide written notice to the mayor and the common council of their intent to file a nuisance action. So whenever Jennifer oh, Zellerby usually files the action, oh, she okay. notifies everyone. I'm going to file this action, and then under the ordinance, everyone has 15 days if they want a resolution. So the whole matter would come before the common council. They have to notify our office within 15 days, and then Jennifer usually would prepare the resolution that would come to the common council describing more details and getting authorization otherwise if we don't receive notice then we're we've been blessed and authorized to file the nuisance action in circuit court without giving any further notice so it, it's public then at that point is that correct when the right when the notice is filed yes right prior to that it's not public I don't, I don't know if you know it. I mean, it just says notice to the mayor. I'm not involved in those specifically, so I don't know what kind of notice Jennifer, I mean, usually it's Jennifer Olivia. I don't know if it just goes to the president. I don't know if Mike mentioned to you how he the nuisance. He didn't explain how that worked. Okay, so the notice goes to the mayor, the president of the council, and the vice president of the council? Yeah, under the public nuisance ordinance, it says the mayor and the common council, so I don't know who in the common council gets notification. I don't know. If any of you have received notification when she's filed action, she hasn't filed action in a couple of years, but I know she has. Uh, what's the most recent one that's been filed? Do you recall? Um, it would have been the one with the landlord that had Ray, Ray Peterson. Ray Peterson, yeah. Okay. So that would have been one of the most recent ones. So I don't know if you received notification of that or if you recall. That would have been would a couple be years ago. The alder in the district would receive the notice. Mm -hmm. Probably the council president, but I council think we yes. should be clear on that. Mm -hmm. Who is actually going to receive notice? Right. So, and then for the confidential one, it would be basically the same thing, but there would be no paper trail or something. Yeah, we would figure that out. I'm going to have Mike though yeah. write up what that process should be, and then we will present it back to you and have that discussion. Um, so I, I think my opinion is that if that can be if that process can be done where the initial notification can be accessed by the public yep. and the council right so if the initial notification and application this is the thing like without the public having to go through open records request or if alders you know, they don't happen to be at that leadership meeting when it comes through. If there's a, a place where those things can sit, mm -hmm. um, that people interested in the subject can go look and see these are all the things, whether there was a resolution or not, that would be, um, I think that's important uh, for the non-confidential ones. Um, I mean, I understand about the bottlenecking, and I like that there's, that not everything has to be a resolution, but that there's the option for there to be an open vote of the entire yeah. council for it. And who's who's deciding that? The president, the leadership, and the mayor. But if those things are like CC'd to all alders, so all alders have an opportunity to say, "I think we need, I think there needs to be a, a debate about this thing. Mm -hmm. Let's do a resolution." But as far as um, timeliness and efficiency of the process if it's just you know the, there's council leadership meeting with the mayor every week that just happens you're always there you're always meeting unless you know well even if he's on the phone you're meeting so that's just in the regular course of events that's where they go right um, and again if there's somewhere in Legistar or online where there's a file of those kept where a any of us or any member of the public can see them. I would think there would have to be a way, though, to notify alders. That there yeah, is. that's what I'm saying. There's, okay. There should be a CC to all okay. alders. Okay. Like, yeah. all alders don't have to be at that leadership meeting. Right. But right. if one of these things is coming through, you know, in two weeks from now, all alders should just be CC'd. This is going to be on. The leadership meeting agenda to discuss about should we do a resolution or not yeah seems reasonable does that make sense to you mm -hmm. yeah yeah any and comments that, that agenda goes out to all the alders anyway the 
leadership. Because we ask them for comments. <coughs> uh, no, the agenda does not go out to everybody. Okay. Uh, the A agenda. request for agenda so items yeah. goes out. Okay, that's yeah. what So yeah. the minute goes to everybody, but then okay. the agenda don't go out. But those who send agenda items are let know about the meeting and if they are able to attend, they can. Paul, any thoughts? No, I concur. That seems okay. Yeah, so if you can just let Mike know. Okay, sounds good. So that's where we are with the approval process. All right, so then the second part is just reworking the definition as we're starting this. And do you all have it? Uh, yep, okay. So do we wanna start with the A, surveillance or surveil means observe or analyze? And talk through that. Thank you. Um, it's a little changed. Sorry, I'm looking for it on, uh, I don't have it in front of me quite yet. Marcy, do you wanna speak to this and what changed a little bit there? Well, I had suggested taking out the language about, um, in, in the original definition, there was language in a manner that's reasonably likely to raise concerns about civil liberty, freedoms of speech, or association, and racial equity, or social justice. And I had recommended that, I look at it from the angle of a lawyer and how do you prove what is, you know, what, it, what would raise concerns about social justice, and how do you define social justice, and how would you go through proving that this would raise concerns to one individual, not another. And so I thought that would be a hard, if we had that kind of language in as a proof basis, it would be hard to prove. And I don't know where we're going with this language and you know, if we're putting it in an ordinance, if it's gonna be an APM, what, you know, where we're gonna go with this language. So I was looking at it more of an enforcement angle. How would we prove what a reasonable person would be concerned about for social justice or racial equity with, it, you know, with what is going on? So that's why I recommended removing that section of it. I think where we were going with that, well, first of all, we just lifted that language from, was it Seattle or something? Yeah. We just, yeah. Yeah. So um, I think where we were going with that was just um, general violation of civil rights or unreasonable search or, you know, something, if, if there's a legal, I don't know, is that Fourth Amendment? kind of issues. Um. Go ahead, Liddell. So I was just gonna say, I mean, this kind of resonates with me to take that out because this incorporates really anything that would be done. Um, and it, you don't have to make that distinction then what the motivations were. Yeah. Yeah, so it would cover everything that would be covered with this, plus perhaps some other things. So, I'm, I, I think it makes some sense yeah. not to throw that in because I think it just kind of complicates things. So I'm, I'm kind of okay with this. So I see you're looking at two different documents. The, that was like our original one. Yeah. The, so I was. Markup. Yeah, I was trying to get what the original definition was to compare it to this. To this draft. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Elder Kimball, do you want my copy? Would that help you? I have that somewhere, just not with me. Here. But but actually, what we're looking at is okay. the one that says draft. Yep. Right, is yep. this one? Yep. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. 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 Just kind of comparing. <coughs> Um, one of the things that I wanted to say is when we sat down and we're talking about this is one, the, the concept behind this was to simplify it, so to pull out the end notes, have everything just yeah. very straight and clear, because this is going to help the agencies as they're thinking through when they're looking at that definition, as we were talking about earlier with, you know, we had some agencies that seemed unclear as to what was surveillance. If we have this all listed in here very clearly, 
and they are going through this and looking at it, I think it's going to be easier for them. And perhaps then we won't have uh, the uh, concern with we're not getting everything that we want to know mm -hmm. about. So that's why as you go through, it's very straightforward. And then we go in and say this is what it does not include. And then listing that. So do we want to go on to um, B and surveillance technology? Yeah. Okay. I thought so, we were there. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so for this one, this takes, and there's a, excuse me, I have a typo there, but so this takes everything that's here that was part of the original one, and we, I brought it up, and um, then between um, Assistant Chief Wall and Marcy, we went through and added some stuff and um, then pulled out a couple other things. And this, just so you know, is I believe some of this also is from um, the city of Davis, California, who has a pretty good surveillance policy. So I looked at that as sort of the, the beginning and then worked from there. I had a question about number 14. Sure. On the list of things that surveillance equipment does not include. So can we... Oh, you want to go back? Okay. Yeah. You want to go through the question? Right? Yep, we're at B. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. okay. So, does um, anyone have any questions? It sounds yeah. like you do. Um, on that, um, what about the situation where, let's just use an example of a sorority that has a camera on their property? and they have given the password to the police, for example, so that the police could access it whenever. Is that covered or not covered? I would say it's not covered because mm -hmm. it's not owned by the city and it's not under contract by the city, which is the second line. Mm -hmm. And we put in the under contract to cover the issue that I think was brought up by David Dreyer where people didn't know so that that covers anyone that we're under contract with. But if we go in and get video from PDQ or from the sorority, we wouldn't be under contract to use that. So I'm going to have to give that some more thought in terms of this policy and whether there's a place for um, having that because it can be used in basically the same way our own cameras are used um, whether it be TE cameras or the police cameras or whatever so um, you know the police can access that if they need to want to whatever at any time just like cameras that the city owns so um, I give that. How do police get access to those? I mean, um, is it through a subpoena or how? No, no, no. no. Uh, they, <coughs> they, I'm, I'm not saying that this is wrong by any means because I know that in the particular situation that I'm thinking of, it was used um, very effectively to identify somebody who needed to be identified. Um, but th if the um, owner of the camera wants to give um, access to the police, they can do that through, like, for example, a password. So the police mm. would be able to then access that through a, a password, the same as they can look at their own cameras, essentially. So. So I think there's two um, situations one is just, you know, in the course of investigating a crime that already happened. That, uh, that's not surveillance. That's just police doing police, police work. work. That's just them doing their work, and that's mm -hmm. not surveillance. But there may be, or Vic, are there situations in which there are locations that you routinely um, look at, say, at convenience stores, uh, security cameras, even when you're not pursuing a particular, investigating a particular crime? Well, th there are some private entities, either businesses or apartment complexes, that have the capability to give us that live access 
most don't even have the capability most are recording to just a DVR mm -hmm. or something uh, and some do and it's usually for either chronic problems at the property or a specific issue and uh, then they will give us uh, authority to look at them and watch them uh, it's a little bit different in that we still are not we don't own that data so it's not coming onto our server so if we see something that's of evidentiary purpose, we still will need to go to them to, to ask for a hard copy of it. And uh, we do address it in our SOP in terms of who can access that and what it can be used for. Uh, and it's, it's, it's a relatively small number of places that even have the capability in the first place to do that, but then allow us to do it. So would it be onerous um, to to have you write, so these are just informal agreements, but to just have an MOU with those places since it's a specific limited number of places? Well, my fear is that they, that they aren't going to sign an MOU. Why they, wouldn't they? If well, they're if actually you, giving you access anyway. Well, it's, it's one thing to give us a password, but people have hesitancy to, to sign something that is they perceive as creating a legal obligation or anything to them and my what I suspect would happen is that most of them just would say all right we're not you know we're not going to do it anymore if you're going to make us sign something some probably would but I think you know we have uh, you know you have sort of mom and pop operators on one end of the spectrum that are going to be sort of fearful of anything and then you have the opposite end where they're going to go to their legal counsel who's going to say let's not it's, there's nothing in it for us. Have, so, you, have you tried it yet? Is that what are you? No, but we do see response? we see some of that actually when we're after the fact going asking for evidence, video evidence. We have lots of places that yeah. will try to uh, you know tell us that they want a subpoena or that they have that they want some sort of form signed, uh, and you know you get all sorts of variations in uh, risk assessment from from companies and businesses and. Uh, so I'm hesitant to introduce one more variable on that because these have been helpful to us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and I th again I think the investigation of crime situation is just completely out of the scope of what we're looking at. But what what I kind of hear you getting at Liddell is if there are, are cameras that the police are routinely um, have live access and are do like actually doing surveillance. Um, that that should be known right and and yeah. and I don't know whether they routinely or don't routinely right. but my understanding is there are some cameras like that to which they have yeah. access and so you know maybe they never look at them unless there is some kind of a crime you know that you that they're looking I I, I just don't know but I wanted to raise that in case and I wanted to think about it then too. So let's put that on hold for think about some more. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, and just if I could add, I would be concerned if I had a business or an apartment building and I signed an MOU. That would, to me, would put me in a legal obligation to provide information, which could put me in a legal, um, where I could, a, a situation where I could be sued if that footage was used in any way that, uh, well, you know, we're a very lit, lit, uh, litigious society, uh, could be used against, say, a person that might felt they were wrongly accused. Well, you gave them the information, now you're part of the lawsuit. So what Vic is saying is that you know, it puts them, their attorneys are gonna say no and don't do it anymore. Uh, well, I feel like that. those kind of businesses aren't, aren't currently allowing the police routinely to just use their cameras for, I mean, you said it was just a handful that let you, that give you that kind of access anyway. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not a huge number and, and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's very different than the city enterprise system yeah. because the, this would be typically, say, an apartment complex working with a district community policing team or a neighborhood officer. So not everybody in the department has the password and the access. Uh, and the times when the officers would be looking at are very uh, few and far between and would be tied to a specific issue or a specific initiative that we'd be doing so certainly nothing remotely like routine just because you know we certainly don't have the time to do that but the focus is going to be on a specific problem or issue 
And this is live feed? Yes. Yes. Okay, I see you have some more notes there. Well, moving on. Yeah, moving on. It's okay with me. Um, I was I was down the list asking about a number. Does anyone else have um, questions? Things they want to talk about about B under the uh, the definition there. My my only thing is we use the term ordinary course of city business in 2, 3, 17, and then 13, ordinary course of providing city services. And I'm not sure what those mean. You want to? That's rusty terminology. <laughs> no, I actually said, why are we saying that? I thought that's it's the a, one they were you. Or is it's that a pretty that's standard the, legally yeah, defined term in a lot well, of rules of evidence. What, yeah. 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 What is that? Definition. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's not defined right now, yeah, obviously, right. within this. I mean, ordinary course would be something I would, I mean, you'd have to look at what the standard definition of ordinary is. I would say yeah. it's something that's used regularly. It's not something you would use on one occasion. It's something that you use regularly for whatever the purpose would be. So it's your general use that would occur, not something that would occur once, unless it's a specific, okay, we always go here for X. This is how we're going to process it. So it wouldn't be a one-time only. It would be something you ordinarily use throughout the day or throughout the course of your business. So it wouldn't necessarily be a one-time only issue. So one of the things that I can think of for this is with the video conferencing with ordinary course of city business would be the debriefings that are done by the police department and the fire department using our polycom service. That's an ordinary course of business that using they do every day. the polycom system? No it's... it's uh, there's cameras that you can see that they're just for video conferencing. That's all they do. And some agencies have them. Um, I'm not totally comfortable with the use of that. Okay. Um, in, in each of the cases in which it's used or in any in particular? Well, presumably the, the meaning is the same in each of them, um, but I, I mean, if if um, the police department, for example, um, ordinary course of business was doing something that we were not happy with in terms of surveillance, um, this. Um, basically says that's okay if it's used regularly is what I'm hearing. Well, would have to because these are at least where I'm looking right now. I don't know if I'm looking somewhere you're not. I'm just looking at the exceptions. So like number two where it says audio, video, teleconference systems. I mean, if we just said that would cover all of them, but if you put in used in the ordinary course of the city business, then if it's something different than their normal routine, then it wouldn't fall under um, an exception. Okay, but like I've but for go. number seventeen. Okay, thanks. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll keep pursuing this number seventeen. Okay. For example, if the police were um, surveilling, you know, doing some surveillance and keeping a data, having a regular database of people who hadn't committed a crime yet. So this predictive policing stuff. I don't know if you're doing that, but profiling people um, based on, you know, there are models of, you know, people, demographic and life circumstances will predict that they're going to become criminals. So if they're keeping databases like that, that to me would be some kind of surveillance, but if they're using it in the ordinary course of business, it would not be, it would not fall under this, right? Yes. I, mean, I don't know if you have something to add. Back. Well, I, think I, I mean, I, I think with that, it, 17 is, is just intending to clarify that we have a records management system and we, you know, write down people's addresses and yeah. names and phone numbers, and it's got a lot of names and phone mm -hmm. numbers in there, but I think most people recognize that's sort of the ordinary course of what we do, and that's not what this is about. Uh, the CAD, the computer aided dispatch, captures all sorts of, if you call 911, they're going to have your phone number, you're going to have your maybe your location when you call, they're going to have your name, and it's just sort of clarifying that those 
routine uh, business public safety uh, databases are not meant to be encompassed uh, by the larger definition. Will it be helpful if you have uh, <coughs> a definition of what it means in this context and have it as an appendix or something else? This whole thing was to get rid of appendices and footnotes. <laughs> 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 kind of see the potential for this spinning out of control. Yeah, if you don't have a definition particularly. Yeah. Uh, what what spinning out of control? I, Sorry, Paul. I, I don't know. We have quorum now. Your, we have quorum. We have three. We only need three for quorum. Oh, okay. I have, I have a six o'clock meeting. Okay. On the west well, side. Well, we're about we're about finished with this. Uh, oh, um, I, I was just wondering. I didn't say anything, but uh, in the normal course of business, by this thing. Um, the police department is, uh, you know, uh, gathering information, and uh, every one of my security customers have very sophisticated uh, uh, camera systems that can be accessed live um, uh, and then oh by the way there's a west town and uh, the uh, I don't think there's any surprise that they uh, you know the new manager there uh, at West Town Mall uh, says come on in and if you want to look at the online video uh, and then to use you it. personally uh, no and uh, <laughs> I won't go any further than that on okay. that part, but uh, you know, the police have the opportunity as do their security. Yeah. I do not have a contract with them, so okay. I don't. But gotcha. uh, we have another customer very close to here that has a system that has probably what 145 screens or something like that on all of their floors, and that uh, you know we routinely monitor that, and we have rules about mm -hmm. what we can share, what we can't share, and uh, what. PD can look at basically they can look at anything they want, but we can't download anything unless you know you got a case number or something. It's not quite that simple, but uh, I'm I'm just wondering uh, what is the uh, uh, in the normal course of business for PD. I mean I look at that as solving crimes, and mm -hmm. sometimes that's sensitive information. Yeah, and I think uh, certainly that's what I meant. Okay. You know we're certainly not trying to hide anything with us we're just looking for clarity so everybody understands what it is we're talking about and I think the the CAD or our records management system and those things that we just use every day I think we view as just ordinary course of business I wouldn't view uh, you know going in to look at cameras of a private vendor while we we do do that sometimes that's sort of odd. That's a little outside the, the ordinary. That's something different, yeah. in my view, than the records management system and, and the CAD. But that's why I wonder. Yeah. So um, number four, could you clarify what you mean by, by the 14, sorry, 14? Mm -hmm. Is that like city channel? Is that those are the kind of cameras you're talking about? No, we're talking about like cameras. Um, I hadn't even thought about city channel. but. Cameras uh, that are at like parking lots, um, the cameras when you come into the building, security cameras. I would think they would be included. Why? Why would do, would you exclude them? Well, for this is going back to I think with Winona Terrace, um, not wanting people to know exactly where all their cameras are, and. Um, you know, if, if they feel that that's going to be a security risk for somebody to know exactly where all their cameras are. Yeah, but, but that doesn't mean they're not actual surveillance technology. Okay. I, I should say, I, I mean, think uh, several of the other cities exempt security cameras um, from surveillance technology. And I think the reasoning is in part that they're stationary, that the purpose is very clear, that if you're coming to a city facility, like, then you know, buyer beware kind of thing versus types of surveillance that people that may go to people or may be mobile or may not be as commonly known and understood as a surveillance camera. So like there were most of the other policies exempted facility surveillance camera, including Seattle exempt, exempts a bunch of surveillance cameras. It seems really odd since like you talk to the average person on the street and that is exactly the camera that, that they would say is a surveillance camera. Well, I, I think. I think, I think that there is a difference between a camera 
on a light pole, you know, somewhere that's considered sort of a public space versus like a government property that you approach, like a police department building or the city county building. Like there's a, I think there's a psychological or a social difference in the perception of those cameras. I think that's one of the ways it's distinct. What do you guys think? Well, I mean, I personally do think um, at least we need to have our own definition of what this means. Yeah, How? but excluding these, you know, basically the, secu the building security cameras from the definition of surveillance. Um, I don't know. I think the only department or the uh, department that is saying no is mainly Monona Terrace, right? But I think I, we can still add them as, yes, these are surveillance equipment, uh, t these are surveillance cameras, but right. if they so don't want them to be known, we can still you know, right. not let yep. them be So I think what I was alluding to is, no. let's bring them in and hear from them also as to why they think they shouldn't be. Uh, then after that, we can let them know why we think they should be. But I do think they should be. And I, I just, I think from looking at the other cities that have done this, uh, it just, because for the reasons Minot Terrace has and we have, we, those are not things we want to have very widely publicized, the locations of these cameras, and it's just a matter of where and how do you address that. So you, yeah. if you, you mm -hmm. could keep it in the definition and then have an exception somewhere, right. uh, although that can some may be more cumbersome from a process perspective. And, and if you keep it in the definition, then it's clear to everybody that it's excluded. So mm -hmm. whatever seems better, but I think it will have to be addressed somewhere. Mm -hmm. so right, that yeah, but I think can we can address it, we can address it somewhere. Through the exceptions. While still saying, yeah, these are, they're obviously surveillance cameras. Mm -hmm. okay. But it doesn't mean that they have to, uh, the, their locations have to be publicly available, publicly known. Okay, that's why it's a draft. This is yeah. what's so good about yeah. this, right? Yeah. So we'll come back, we'll talk about it, and then we'll come back with something okay. to present. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, okay. Anything else of concern? And we, we will also talk about the phraseology ordinary course. Yeah. 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 That, and, and I'm going to do a little more thinking around the database, the, just my thoughts around the predictive policing practices and if that's ordinary and also a kind of surveillance. Okay. Well, we could try to come up with some language based. I think Vic understands the concern. So yeah. come up with some okay. other language, don't you think, Vic? Mm -hmm. To cover that concern. Definitely. And present it back to okay. you at your next Thanks. meeting. Yeah. Good. All right. So next steps are um, I, Quasi, and I will go through the survey. Enos is going to follow up with the people who haven't, the agencies who haven't responded. And then um, Quasi and I and maybe Liddell will talk about what needs to be followed up on with the responses we do have. Um, and we can send out an email to you all about what those things are, just to keep you informed before our next meeting. Um, Heather, you are going to put the two things, uh, PowerPoint is already on Legistar? I will put it on Legistar. Okay, and you'll, we'll put the survey data on Legistar. And will you have time to reach out to Monona Terrace? I don't think so. Okay, so Quasi and I will reach out to Monona Terrace and CDA to get them to come to uh, one of our next meetings. And next meeting, we don't have a next meeting yet, do we? Um, so someone will ask Quasi or Lisa to doodle, probably Lisa to doodle poll us for our next meeting. And I'm on CDA, so I can also mention oh, it next excellent. week. excellent. Yeah. They meet on the 12th, so. Okay. Great, thanks. Um, and then lastly, just a huge, huge thank you to Heather, who is leaving us after tomorrow, who just You've been great to work with on this committee, and I've really enjoyed collaborating with you and your outreach to the staff and um, 
it's it's just been really great, and we I'm very very sad to see you go. Thank you. But I wish you the best. Thank you so much. The white bed. Yeah. It's been a pleasure on this yeah. one, you guys. But I'm down the street. I'm on South Hamilton, so oh, okay. I can always have lunch. Mm. <laughs> or I can come so see a city meeting later after work. <laughs> so we'll just continue to eat You can be a groupie. Mm. No you can come be a groupie. <laughs> yeah, mm. yeah. Mm. I, have, I can weigh in as a citizen now. <laughs> <laughs> Danger. <laughs> okay. Uh, with that, does anyone have a motion? Move to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, so you're not Thanks, expecting everyone. me to...